just as inspiration and not really I'm not really going to explain everything about it because it's relatively complex and I hope to actually have another webinar where this will be uh, done in more detail but I showed it a little bit la two weeks ago when in the last webinar we were talking about uh, navigating complex flows. Uh, magma ray is actually a um, very simple hack that uh, simulates or recreates let's say a uh, ray tracer using the features of magma. I have a scene that has a bunch of geometry objects in it and I have a, peer, a plane that was converted to particles and I'm shooting a ray from the camera through each particle on this plane and hitting the geometry behind and performing my own shading that means I'm performing funk shading, I'm performing uh, ray trace shadow uh, casting and three bounces of reflections. So uh, this plane is actually the particles uh, linked to the camera that means if I start moving around I'm actually ray tracing in real time the scene and you can see camera is moving, the plane is moving and it's uh, shifting around and the other thing that it's doing is uh, if I for example select a light here and move that light around uh, it's going to obviously dynamically change the shadows and I can go and change the intensity and the color so if I change the color to something yellowish it will affect them or green and so on and of course I can move objects around I showed this last time and they are doing the reflections and they're changing that too. Um, I'll go back here to a little bit more white lighting. Interestingly I have the same example in genome. Uh, genome can do exactly the same flow and the only difference is I'm setting the vertex colors of a mesh plane. It looks a little bit blurry because I'm using very few segments. I'm using 100 by 100 segments here uh, for speed so if I move time slide is fast enough but I can go here and go down by example come eventually it's become slower but it will get more costly and I can even render that and get a relatively nice image. Now I'm doing uh, two million faces or a million uh, points and will take a little bit longer to, uh, to update actually a lot longer but eventually I'm going to get hopefully a much clearer picture. Um, so this um, I hope, see, that's pretty much a ray traced image uh, with very high resolution and I can open a, a image viewer and show you what uh, it looks like. This was rendered with several million particles and it looks a lot like a real ray tracer with all the bounces and you can see the reflection of this sphere into this teapot on the teapot's reflection here. Uh, I can go and tweak parameters. Let's, let me open the uh, Cricktor version of it and um, I can disable the reflections and control uh, a lot of the parameters there. Let me select this. Um, we currently, what I'm doing is I have created a black off, which is a compound uh, operator that contains the actual ray tracing code. Uh, it gets a position of the camera and the direction to, to shoot the ray actually and the light position uh, is being extracted and used to uh, calculate some funk shading in this area. Um, and I'm doing the ray intersection and then uh, taking the uh, reflection ray and outputting it out and then uh, that result from this operation goes into the next stage in, so since we don't have four loops yet we're basically using three intersect rays here or three ray traces uh, using the direction of the previous reflection to trace the ray with three bounces and then we add all those values together. If I set this value to zero, if I disable the add operators that take the colors returned by each one of those intersections and add them together, if I pass through I get rid of the reflections altogether. I just get the first bounce, the first pass, I hit the geometry and stop. If I enable this and disable the second stage here, I'm getting rid of the secondary reflection and I'm just doing one bounce of reflection now. And uh, this spinner here actually controls the same thing by just changing the multiplication uh, and if I go there to one I'm going to get full strength reflection there. Uh, and um, I needed to hack a little bit around the inability, the current inability of magma to actually get from a mesh intersection get to the node that was intersected in order to get its color properties for example. So currently in this implementation the colors are actually hard-coded here. So if I go here and say show me the color swatches, you see that I have 
uh, encoded all the colors in the order in which I picked the geometry to be ray traced. I had to provide the colors because otherwise I would be able to do only grayscale rendering without being able to ask the object what is your color. We intend and we have it on the wish list to add an operator that takes a mesh intersection and based on the object index figures out the node that was hit so I can use a prop query to ask it about its material and its object color and so on and that will be how this will be uh, continued developing. You don't really need a ray tracer written in Magma, it's more of a proof of concept that it's possible to do and I feel it's neat to actually understand how it works so I'll try to create a better tutorial about it. And this was it. Today you saw a little bit more uh, practical usage of Magma in various places inside of 3ds Max. I tried to keep it simple and uh, not go into much detail about all the operators that exist and just give you the 90% of the things that most people actually do, changing color based on velocity and age and things like that, uh, culling particles and finding uh, data on geometry objects and so on. You see that Magma can actually speed up your workflow a lot because it operates on already pre-cached data and uh, you can uh, achieve really fast results in interactive speeds. So it's very similar to actually image compositing, you post-processing your particle data. And uh, it should open new possibilities also for users not only of Krakato but uh, Frost Genome and we have another product uh, in the works that I cannot talk about uh, which uh, will be using Magma. So learning Magma in Krakato will allow you to do more things with Frost Genome and whatever comes in the future.